Hey there, I am Nev, I am a dev, and today I want to talk about the future of web development and the future of the web and all of that stuff. So yeah, it's like currently it's 25 degrees outside, it's like very fucking hot here in Zurich. Um, just came home from training, but I found like, yeah, this would be um, an interesting topic to talk about today. Before I like point out any framework or something like that, I think, I think tech stacks, they don't really matter. In the end, all the user's going to care about is what he's going to receive and how it will work. Not like how it was built and with what technologies and stuff. Like if I was an average YouTube user, I would not care how the auth layer is done or how the, I don't know, the videos are hosted or some something like that. I don't know. Um, this is just, um, doesn't really matter. So it's really on our side of the developer, how we decide to build out this, these web apps, websites, and other stuff. First of all, I want to showcase you a little project that I have been building with Next.js. Um, I wanted to try out Next.js, like especially with uh, React and so, um, because I uh, didn't write any React in a long time. So yeah, let's just go ahead and do bun dev and open this. So yeah, this is the application I have been building. Like if you refresh, we get this neat little animation, which is done with Framer Motion. And yeah, I, I just love that. It's um, It felt great writing um, React again. And yeah, so where do these come from? They of course come from Drizzle. Uh, do I have, already have a Drizzle instance open here? Nope. Yeah, they come from Drizzle. It's not that... Um, that big of a deal. Uh, we can add a record. Uh, ID will be generated uh, default. Um, body will be I am recording right now, and the author is Neville Bram and Rec. And then if we save this change, uh, nothing will happen. But if we refresh, yeah, we can see that. Um, our data is now here. We could of course put this into a form action and I don't know what, um, but yeah, this is just how I have done it uh, right now. And yeah, I think it's uh, very cool. Um, Next.js, I don't know if I'm even doing this like correctly, if I should put this uh, DB query in here or like in here or in a separate file, like, um, yeah, it's it's um, a huge um, difference to what I'm used to with Svelkit because in Svelkit we got these load functions and server actions and the endpoints. Um, sure, endpoints are also in here, I think, but uh, yeah, it's just something different. Uh, which brings me to the next subject, and this is effectively Next.js versus Svelkit. So which one is better? I wouldn't say there is anything... Um, that is specifically better. Um, I though think that Next.js is in a long time going to be curated better because, um, yeah, because Svelkit, uh, because Vercel owns, uh, Next or huge parts of Next, they like build Next, I guess. And so I think they will build many more, uh, stuff for Next, um, than for Svelkit. So that's, bit of a problem but um yeah I, I am not sure i i still love to use velkit and i will probably continue to do so um and yeah it's a huge it's a huge difference especially with data loading like react is also more component based while svelkit is like page based um yeah they also have kind of a a file based routing system in uh in react or in in next but we have this very specific uh, system in uh, our in our Svelkit application, so that's a huge or that's a little difference, um, because yeah, I think in one video I also mentioned that one of the pain points or one of the things I didn't really like about Svelkit was that I can't put multiple components like in one file in one Svelte file in React. I can just put um, so many functions in there as I want, and that all works. So. This is very nice. So I want to talk about the AI SDK by Vercel. Um, NPM install AI. Crazy that they just got this package name. Yeah, they have built-in LLM adapters. Um, they can stream the messages like ChatGPT. Like in ChatGPT, your messages doesn't just pop out, but it gets like streamed like first line, second line. It, 
like it's typed kind of, but the full word. Yeah, and it's edge and serverless ready. So I uh, tried that or I played around with it a bit. I played around with it a bit. I set up my Svelte kit with it, um, but I unfortunately don't have an OpenAI key or like an OpenAI, uh, I don't have any tokens left in OpenAI, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I will see how I can get some. And yeah, I will definitely uh, do a future video on this um, if I'm able to. And yeah, so this is, uh, the setup is like super straightforward. Like you install your adapter, then you install AI and then uh, runtime edge. And then, yeah, here you do your, your data loading and then here you do a little form, I think. It's uh, very easy to do AI nowadays. <laughs> like you could build your own chat GPT with this. It's not that difficult. And I really think Vercel is going into the right direction with AI. So AI was kind of not in a lost place, but like nobody really knew how, what to do with AI and like, what's it? And now... Vercel is kind of pushing AI into a very cool direction with their next thing that they were building, which is generative UI. Uh, what generative UI basically is, is that it will not just give us text like ChatGPT would, but it gives us these very nicely styled components. And I'm sure you all know about v0.dev. We can, I don't know, like for example, a notion like editor and then it will just generate it yeah generates beautiful things Ooh, i like that one and mm, i'm not really sure about that one but this is for sure very nice it does not work of course um but yeah looks looks very nice and then i can just go ahead into the code and copy the code into react or html HTML now will be read only, but we could just like copy that one, put it into our Svelte and then add um, our interactivity to it, uh, which is super convenient. Yeah, this is V0. Um, highly recommend you to check it out. You can do like so many things with it. It's uh, very nice. It kind of looks the same or not the same, but like very shadsy any very similar like, but... Um, I think it looks very cool. It's um, it's a nice thing. And they are also, like I said, they're doing this one. So um, their AI SDK with generative UI. The thing is, you can't only supply um, components like in here. So you can also do function calling. So here it says without function calling, what's the temperature in San Francisco? As a large language model, I don't have information about the weather. What's that temperature in San Francisco? The temperature is in San Francisco is 47 degrees Fahrenheit. So what does that mean? Um, well, it says the temperature. So how does it get that? Um, we basically have our file, which is, I think, showcased um, here. No, which is showcased here in tools, get city weather description, get the current weather for a city. And basically what it does is we need to describe what this tool is and then uh, if we send this prompt and our OpenAI or our ChatGPT or whatever recognizes, oh yeah, that is um, this tools thing um, of get city weather, it will call an API and then will generate us the weather. Um, yeah, pretty neat. Like, like showcase in here, get weather, San Francisco, California. Yeah, beautiful. And towards the AI native web with Vercel SDK 3.0, we're simplifying how you integrate AI into our apps. By using React server components, you can now stream UI components directly from LLMs without the need for heavy client-side JavaScript. This means your app can be more interactive and responsive without compromising on performance. Very nice. Also love React server components. Um, gotta check them out and do some shit with them because I think they're really crazy. And this update makes it easier to build and maintain AI powered features, helping you focus on great, on creating great user experiences. We're excited to see what you ship. So yeah, try the demo. Um, what's the price of Solana? And it will say 
yeah, Solana currently 144. Um, no, dollar 177. Is that correct? Okay, is that something different? I don't know. I'm not sure. Buy me some Solana for $30. Mm, 29.99 we can purchase this of course this is not real but like yeah you have successfully purchased yeah i'm curious what's my balance <laughs> it, it didn't prepare for that but like this is um this is Vercel AI SDK, and this is what they kind of, what Vercel pushes us um, to do more and more with AI, and I think it's a great direction we're going in. So um, I have listened to a few podcasts where Guillermo Rauch was, was a guest in, and he was interviewed about Vercel and about AI, and I think he explained pretty much very good how developers and how AI is like evolving we are now, he describes us as a plumber who just um, like basically curates the AI. Like we let the AI do shit and then we just go ahead and correct it if it does something wrong. Yeah, this is just the direction I think we're going with. Last thing is that I am recently made a switch to Vercel. I think a week ago from now, uh, so last Sunday, I um, made the switch to Vercel. Why? Because I think Svelkit and Vercel, they work better together than Svelkit and Netlify. Because Rich Harris and other Svelkit team members now work at uh, Vercel. And I think the collaboration between them is now much higher than uh, between Netlify. And I think I think that's great. But um, yeah, maybe it, it's a bit there to like be head of the competition. But uh, I am I'm not sure. I just I think I think Vercel is a great tool. The migration went uh, very well. The only thing uh, that didn't really uh, go as well or was a bit of a pain was to migrate all my domain DNS stuff. But like in the end, it was just also just copying over some values and that's it. And it uh, was set up super fast. So yeah, this is basically it. Um, I also redeployed CodeDoodle. Um, so if you go to codoodle.nevilbram.com, uh, you will come to this site. Um, now has GitHub OAuth, like all the views. All the users were unfortunately wiped because I upgraded to Lucia v3. But um, yeah, we now have some other things. I replaced all the form actions with kit endpoints. And yeah, admin dashboard remains the same. And yeah, this is uh, basically it. Check it out if you want to write something. Would be very cool. And yeah. Check it out. So this was today's video. I hope you found it interesting to hear my thoughts on like the future. And please don't be like angry in the comment section um, at anyone and especially not at me because uh, like I said, tech stack, they are not a critical part. It's how you do it. And it's like the Windows and Mac debate. Okay, well, the answer is kind of clear in that debate, but no, just kidding. But please don't like shame anybody because he's using this or that stack. I think every stack is okay. Um, I'm just very comfortable with Svelkit right now and maybe this will change in like the next week or next day. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I will uh, hit you up on this subject like with AI and stuff. And yeah, we'll see us next Wednesday. Bye.